Let's go. Let's go. All right. Three, two, one. Damn. Salo falava kiora malole le aloha pulu vinaka fakalo falahi atu kiora na and what's good, good fam? Yeah. This is the DJ Waves and Nons, and we are the Uso Table Talk podcast. Unfortunately, uh, our Usos can't be here right now. Frosty's in uh, quarantine. Yeah, and <laughs> Broly's at home. Pretty much, yeah. With his mom doing something else. We love you so. <laughs> we love you, man. We love your mom too. She's, she's very awesome. Um, yeah, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, shout out to Bella Vista Hotel. Thank shout you so, out, so much out. for letting us use this space. We appreciate you guys so much. We appreciate you so much. So be sure to keep uh, checking us out on our uh, Insta, SoundCloud, uh, YouTube as well. So uh, yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, do do whatever you guys want to do. Um, uh, but yeah, we're basically the also table talk. Yeah. Mm. Basically, we're just a group of Usos. We yeah. Obviously, if this is your first time on here, mm-hmm. uh, we're just a bunch of Usos who gather around the table, talk about realities, talk about anything that we feel um, needs to be talked about. And that's our heart, man. That's our heart. So, obviously, we have a special guest with us with us here. Yeah. Uh, we have actor, director, Woo! dreamer, and a pioneer. Sophia <laughs> Pelesasa, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank welcome, Usos. Welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. you. Those were some words, man. <laughs> I feel um, overwhelmed by nah, this situation. Bro. Bro, we've been following your journey for a while now, so thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, being thank us, you so being much with us here, bro. All good. Thank you so much for calling us in and letting us talk, tell our story. And, and <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for inviting me to this space. Yeah, uh, where I'm completely underdressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, we know the feel every, oh, yeah. every time we bro. Oh yeah, I felt like I was coming to do something uh, naughty. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> Yeah. So if you don't know, basically Bella Vista is like a really poshy um, pub it's so kind flash. of thing. Yeah, it's very bougie. Yeah, uh, and you just picture, imagine like us islanders just rocking up how we did. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I look like I was coming to work. <laughs> Same man. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much again for, for joining us. So, mm. so what do you been up to, bro? What's, what's the go? Like, you been oh, busy? Yeah, man. I I feel like the last few months have just kind of been condensed into one yeah. very long year. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, just in post, post-production, we mm. made some cool little projects and they dropped, the first one drops in like nine days. So we've been mm. just wow. busy pumping some stuff out, telling some stories from the West. And so what's the name of that? What's the name of that project? Uh, so uh, the first one that drops in nine days is called Parramatta. Yeah. Uh, so that drops on the 14th. Wow. Shout out of December. Shout out to Parramatta. Oh, <laughs> come on. Um, and then we have another one called Daily, which uh, pumps out on the 4th of January next year. But, um, nice. We, we screened them both next weekend at a private screening, so. Ooh. That's awesome. Yeah, we're against the clock, but um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good. Bro, yeah, the fact that um, even like the restrictions as well been lifted, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know what funny, you know what funny story is that we have two screenings, we split them because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they lifted the restrictions. Mm. So um, shout out to our premiere. Thank shout you so out. much for, uh, for that uh, inconvenience. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool. honestly, like I, I hate to be that kind of guy who starts a conspiracy, but I really feel like I just was not. <sighs> I was like, "There's no difference." That's a hot teller right there. <laughs> right? That's, that's, a, hot that's a hot teller. Well, oh, you know what? I'm not a conspiracy person, but the more I think about the COVID thing, the more, <laughs> the I, more you become. Like I, I don't want to question it because obviously, you know, it's to people it's real. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like life has just sort of resumed for a lot of us. Like when they lifted the restriction, mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, people have been living their life yeah, sort of normally anyway." Yeah, so, yeah. Hard. I don't know. I mean, we're still going down to Plumpton Shopping Centre like yeah. if oh, nothing yeah. happened. Plumpton, but Plumpton is the place to be. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> oh, shout out to Plumpton. Shout out to everyone in Plumpton listening in, man. Yeah, yeah. Mad love for you all. Shout out, shout out. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Romantic. Well, honestly, like, um, something we've been, we've been following, like, your Insta now and just, like, a little bit of your story and your journey, probably for, since... Like not even that long to be honest yeah. mm. and i think the one thing that really drew me to to having you on was just well like i just see your work ethic and i see that you're a dreamer i see that you're mm. doing so many things i actually seen you on um the sis show that's my first time ever seeing you uh, um in a, in a in sort of a uh, yeah, show, show yeah. Or, or something so like i'm i'm obviously and maybe there's a lot of other people out there who are very new to um you know what you do and, and mm. who you are so Tell, tell us a little about how that how that came about. Uh, yeah, so I um, man, um, 
Like I want to go all the way back to my Sunday in my my. I was the worst. <laughs> like, I was that kid. Did, uh, you, did, you, did you get to play Jesus? Never. No, nah, I, I was always Pontius Pilate. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be Jesus this oh, year. No, no, no. It always, went, it always went to my better looking brother. Because it was Jesus. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you're going to make someone Jesus, it has to be the good looking one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I guess, uh, I, so um, I, at high school, I, um, in my uh, second to last year, I took drama as a subject. Yeah. Yeah. Just as a sort of like, uh, you know, everyone thinks it's the easy subject. So mm. I did it for that reason. True. Yeah. Um, but then um, the drama teacher was this Balani lady. Um, she saw something me and she paid for uh, private tuition for me to do it outside of school yeah and i was like so i was competing against all these balangi kids and all these competitions and um i, I was beating them at everything yeah, so um, yeah. <laughs> i was like oh this could be cool uh but i told my parents when i was like eight years old that i was i wanted to be a, a lawyer and my parents said you know island parents they're like hold yeah. on to the gems yeah and they were like you said you wanted to be a lawyer and i was like i was eight <laughs> um, so I went to law school and I did law for three years and oh, then I think wow. by the end of third year I was like I had to get out of this yeah. Um, yeah. and I did the dramatic thing uh, which probably was a good setup to be an actor and I ran away wow hey. shout out to the people that ran away so <laughs> shout out to everyone chasing their dreams and ran away from their families <laughs> to prove a point wow yeah. um, come on I ran away and I, I applied for drama school got in and then did drama school and my parents sort of just saw yeah. that I was passionate and happy and I wasn't depressed with my life so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they sort of just allowed me to go and do it my dad's first thing though when I graduated from drama school was his first question was so do you finish your law degree now or like, it's gone it's not it's, it's gone. <laughs> I'm not going back to that <laughs> it's like damn it um, so yeah uh, and then that's how I got into it like sort of wow. as an actor so that was yeah. that was all in New Zealand yeah, so uh, we moved here, I moved back, did uni, and then I came back. Oh, yeah. okay. That's wow. Cool. So you're, you're born in New Zealand, eh? Born, born in New Zealand. Did most of my schooling and life in Rotorua. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to make a point of that because everyone assumes, because I'm Savon, that I'm from Auckland. Auckland, yeah. And, <laughs> no, props to Auckland, props to Savon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm from a small town, you know, and uh, yeah. there's no, there were like five Savon families. So oh, wow. uh, um, I like to make a point of that mm. as well. So, yeah. That's cool. Cool. And then we moved here. Um, all my younger siblings kind of grew up in Manjua. And yeah. then wow. I went back to uni. I came back. I went to, I stayed in New Zealand and worked for a bit. I uh, moved to the UK, worked for a bit, and then came back. Yeah, wow. Because I was cool. broke and I needed my mum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's all right to come back home, man. Oh, uh, I, no, that's a yeah. relatable thing to me, totally. man. It's all, it's all good. Totally, yeah. As long as you still got that dream, the same hard. dream. Yeah, it was hard, though, like, yeah. to keep it alive when you're broke and you're yeah. like, mm. approaching your 30s. Yeah. Um, but my parents, my family's pretty good. Yeah. Nice. I said I would just accept that I was going to be the broke sibling oh. the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you got to be broke to chase your dreams. Man. Yeah, it's true, <laughs> man. I mean, you know, sac- you know, the sacrifice. Like, how much are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah, for? yeah. man. I can feel this is already getting hot, bro. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, right, and right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go to our next segment, which is the hot tala. The Uso Table Talk Podcast. Hot tala. Hot tala. Hot tala. Hot tala. Hot tala for you, bro. All right, so if this, is your, if this is your first time tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Hot Tala. Hot Tala is obviously hot conversations, hot talks, Talk. hot topics, anything hot. So, oh, we're hot, so. Hot Tala. <laughs> yeah, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> nah. Well, it's something to be hot because this room is freaking cold. Oh, yeah. But. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, hot tala is basically a segment where we conversate about things. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe we go we go really deep. Um, if there's any way I can explain it, it's honestly we just go there, you know, yeah. with our conversations. So, all right, Fios, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being on here with us. We can't wait, honestly. Um, so for hot tala, we wanted to talk about your story, and we we'll start off we we'll start off your story, yeah, cool. um, your personal story, your upbringing, and get to know you, I guess. Sweet. So, um, obviously, you like you said before, you're born in New Zealand. Yeah. You and you're half Tokelauan, half Samoan. Samoan. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm gonna like uh, wrap my villages at this point. <laughs> How many are there? Yeah, my father, my uh, Samoan blood is from Fatosi, Safutulafai, and Vailopalauli, mm. and Savai. So I'm very much Savai. Yeah, Savai. Uh, and my um, Tokelau is from Nukunonu Tulato. Nice. Wow. Um, my diasporic roots are to Fort Block. Rotorua, Aotearoa, New Zealand. And um, 
Mount Druitt West is in New York. Surely. Come on. Hey. Hey. Gotta say it all, eh? Because oh, I think, no. you know, because in, you know, with visibility, like even just people hearing their their place names, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially Doug Lowens as well. You know, they never hear it, so it's, it means a lot for yeah. people to hear that stuff. I love that. Yeah. I love that you always um like meaning to represent Doug Low as well. You know, always, yeah. always. It's, it's my whole. It's our entire half of me. I can't yeah. really. You know, honestly, like for me yeah. personally, I I haven't learned much about. The, yeah. the, the island itself yeah. and it's one of those things like being like watching you and watching your journey even some of the posts that you mm. post bro, it's beautiful bro. Yeah. Yeah. it's like wow there's another aspect of our culture totally. you know, of our people yeah it's, and that's it's a conversation about like uh, big Polynesia versus small Polynesia yeah, yeah. we forget about us mm. you know and I'm someone to alone so dominant in small culture yeah, yeah. Um, and I know the responsibility of raising up to go low yeah Oh man, that's crazy. Okay, so how was it? How was it like up your upbringing with um? You obviously have siblings as well. Yes. Yeah. So there's uh six of us. Yep. Wow. Uh, yeah. Big family. Yeah. Two sisters, uh, top and tail, and uh, four brothers in the middle. Yeah. Nice. So how was it growing up? Mm. Um, I am as a as a 33 year old year old male. Yeah. I'm uh, look back at my life and I'm very proud of 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 what. My family did, I think, yeah. considering the circumstances we were raised in. Yeah. Um, we were made, ra- raised predominantly in, in, in an area called Fort Block, and I don't know if anyone knows that in Rotorua, but if you've watched Once We're Warriors, that's where it's set. Oh, wow. <laughs> what? Yeah. So the, the writer of Once We're Warriors is from Fort Block. Okay. Man. And he set Once We're Warriors in our area. So that, yeah. that's like hood hood. Hood hood. <laughs> hood, hood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In a um, small town, New Zealand, and yeah, yeah. Uh, my parents were migrants. My my mother came as a as a eight nine year old Togelo mm. kid as part of a resettlement scheme. And yeah, Togelo, nice. where the New Zealand government had to resettle Togeloans because it was overcrowded. Yeah, wow. So um, my mum came as part of, of that scheme, and then she met my father, who was a trumpet player in a, a faili band from Fotosi. Um, he came as uh, as like a trumpet player in a band and she went to the concert and they fell in love. That's the romantic version <laughs> of the that's story. The, that's the version they I, told you. That's the one that I heard. <laughs> they, they told me and that's the one that you know you see in movies. <laughs> but the, the the version that I hear from other things is that they ran away, they got a Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or they were blah, blah, blah. Yada, blah. yada. <laughs> Had two weddings. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, and then they popped out six of us. True. Wow, that's awesome! Yeah. That's awesome, bro. I, I'm, are you you were mentioning before how like Rotorua is it? Uh, it's such a um, like not really. There's not really like many Pacific Islanders there. Mm. Right? No, so. it's a very it's a really small community, and I think the majority of the uh, Pacific people there are Togolans because we came. Ah. So when the government moved Togolans to New Zealand, they took us straight to Rotorua. Yeah, that's good. to work the forests. Okay. So ah. those forests in the area were our our, our grandfathers planting those trees and building yeah. those forests from scratch. It was different from Samoans. Samoans Samoans went straight to Auckland. Yep. The Galoans went straight to like the small towns. And that's wow. how we ended up there. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, at least that you were able to stay in a community of um, you know, Togalawans, totally. Togalawans people. Yeah, it's funny though, because we grew up around Togalawans, but mm. my dad is a staunch Samoan. Oh, uh, yeah? wow. And so yeah, my mannerisms are very Samoan. Like yeah, if yeah, people okay. met me, they, they know I'm a Samoan. Yeah, 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 100%. Uh, yeah. Uh, Togalawans find me too aggressive. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's how my, f- we, we grew up in this in Togalawan community, but very, very for Samoans. So yeah. uh, Togalawans are always like, <laughs> I've, I've had um, like conversations at home. Was it strictly Samoan? Or oh, yeah. Samoan. Yeah, yeah. The only time you ever heard my because my mom spoke Samoan too. Oh, okay. My nice. mom's Samoan Togolawan, so she's oh, but right, her, right, her right. dominant language is Samoan. Nice, nice. Uh, and uh, we only heard Togolawan when I guess when my mom was pissed off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. It's a beautiful language when <laughs> you're angry. It's very poetic. <laughs> The sweet sounds. The sweet, sweet sound of a Togolawan woman yelling at me. Yeah. Wow, oh, I love that. So um. Ah, I'm, I'm gonna ask. You go, yeah. yeah, bro. So, like, when you when you were growing up, like you said, you you were in acting school, college kind of thing. Yeah, when I finished high school, yeah, yeah. So, so when um when you were growing up, when you were growing up, and you were going through that, um, when you were, when you were attending that, like, were there what were like if did you ever come across any like challenges, um, as a Polynesian um mm. ch- uh, person, you know, individual, yeah, and um, if so like. What were yeah, they? Yeah, yeah well, I mean, I guess it's twofold because there was the challenges of ex- my family accepting that that was something I wanted to do. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. And then there was the challenge of being a brown person in a very white institution. Okay, yeah. Um, so uh, the first one, like, my parents just 
were not happy that I had chosen to do that. After. Yeah. You know, they were like, it, what it, like it's, you know, uh, it, what's the, the saying is like, as a, my, the child of migrants, you have like th- three options of mm-hmm. like, for life. It's like you become a doctor, yep. you become an engineer, or you're dead. Those are the three <laughs> things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so like, I never became any of those. So my parents found that really hard to accept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially because my older sister was a lawyer. So, True, yeah. You know, having two lawyers would have been a cool thing. Yeah. You know, f- on migrant migrant terms. You yeah. Know? I've got right. two lawyer kids. True. Um, and it took ages. My mom kind of came around uh, faster, but my dad just sort of uh, found that harder to accept. Mm-hmm. And uh, at drama school, I was also coming out of the closet at the same time. Yeah. So oh, okay. it was a uh, sort of joint, uh, <laughs> fucked up journey. <laughs> <laughs> Because I went into that, I went into that, cl- I went into that drama sc- drama school, a straight man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I came out a gay man. Wow. And my parents yeah. were like, it, "That's what happens." How did your How did your family take it? Yeah, yeah. My parents, like my parents, are pretty like like my mom. <laughs> my, my mom's only uh, comment was, "Can I still have a kid?" <laughs> I'm like, sure. I'm, I'm, Too honest, man. I'll find uh, someone. Yeah. I'll find someone somewhere. <laughs> um, and my siblings are actually all pretty chill. My brothers, I was the most nervous about. Yeah. Um, because I'm the eldest brother, you know. So you know, yeah. they always oh, looked to me as sort of as you know a role model. And mm. for me, it yeah, it took it. So it took a few years for me to come out. To, it was a really gradual process. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. In the end, I just made a poem and I made a video of it and shot it as a film and then yeah. I posted it online. And my oh. brother, my little brother, like messaged me, and he was like, "Oh, what's that poem about?" <laughs> I said, <it. laughs> "I was like, it's art, you know. You make what of it? Yeah, you want. yeah, yeah." He was like, "Oh, I think I know what it is." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, well, cool, yeah, yeah." He was like, <laughs> "And I was like, oh, are we having this conversation?" He was like, "I don't know, are we?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I don't know." A standoff is shit. Yeah, yeah. And then he was like, "I was like, well, if it's the question, I think you want to ask me. The answer is yes." Yeah. And. uh why, how do you feel? Yeah. And this is, he was uh, 16 at the time, my yeah. little brother. And he messaged back, he was like, you're my brother, uh, why would I care? Yeah. Well, I, I love you, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're my, my big brother and I, I'm proud of you. Yeah. And, um, and then after that, I gradually came out to the rest of my brothers. The second brother was just like, I told him in the car, mm. we were driving and uh, I said, oh, I'm gay. And he pulled over. Mm. He like took a few breaths and yeah. looks at me and goes, Fuck, I already knew. <laughs> so, so go, kept driving. It was, like, it was easy. That was my last brother that was the hardest because he converted. Oh, I should segue into this properly. Um, so we were raised Catholic. So okay, yeah, you yeah. Know, I don't know if you know, anyone knows Catholics, but we're a pretty liberal, yeah. a liberal version of the Christian church. Yeah. <laughs> my mother would dispute that. But um, <laughs> my brother converted to Mormonism mm. when oh, we were okay. in our 20s. And yeah. he, he married a Mormon. And... Uh, Absolute love and respect, but I I didn't know enough about the church to be able to feel confident enough to tell that. To uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, 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 from my perception, I just knew that it would. Uh, if I told him that information, that he would have a problem with it, just based on his politi- what I believe to be his belief. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, anyway, he was dropping me off to Doonside Station at one point to go to work, mm. and um, I looked. I went to say bye. I turned around. He was just like bawling his eyes wow. out. And this would have been like a good two years after I told everyone else. Yeah. And I was like, "What's wrong with you?" He was like, "He just like cried." And he was like, "Why didn't you just tell me uh, about it?" And I was like, "I didn't want to put you in a position with your church where you had to decide." Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, not that I know what your church's like st- stance is, it, but I just didn't want to make you decide uh, whether I could be around you or your children. And mm-hmm. for me, it was the kids. Like, I know, like. You know, in the Christian church, sometimes being gay is, it automatically makes you a creep mm. by default. And I didn't want that to be a perception that I, yeah. you know, off years with the kids. Yeah. Can't leave them there. True. You know, and so I just didn't tell him that because I didn't want him to think of me that way. Yeah. Even though we're not that, what, it's not a general, it's not, yeah. you know, wash of, you know, everyone's a creep because they get, every gay person's a creep. Yeah. But yeah. I just didn't want that to be a, an issue. So, and he was like, I don't care. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm a Mormon, but you're my brother. So, like, yeah. That I I will find I, I I will we will work it like you know I, I love you nonetheless so I've been pretty blessed with a pretty blessed family that's beautiful that's beautiful yeah. wow. I mean it's informed who I am and how I tell stories now so yeah yeah, yeah. I think if I didn't have them I, I definitely would I'd be a very different person yeah. yeah do you feel like that's given you more freedom to be able to I guess like not only creatively express yourself but mm. also um, how you present yourself 
in the public eye. Totally, yeah. yeah, because I'm not lying to myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you can tell when people have something on their shoulder. Yeah, 100%. And I can tell stories now and be very, like, um, upfront about them. You yeah. Know? Um, uh, I mean, I said it in the other podcast, uh, the Knights at the Brown Table, but you yeah. know, the story about Parramatta, like people yeah. are genuinely shocked. People who know that I'm gay are pretty genuinely shocked that that's the story I chose to tell. Yeah. Um, but it's sort of like, because I'm gay, I can't tell the story about footy. Yeah. Like, I grew, up, I grew up playing <laughs> footy. Like, it's true. You know, I, I, I love footy. It's, um, yeah. it's, a st- it's a part of, it's the thing that connects me to my brothers. And yeah. The thing yeah. That connects exactly. me to my father. Yeah. Like, it's the thing we talk about around mm. the table. Like, I also want to tell the story yeah. about uh, um, uh, footy and so what if it's about straight men? My brothers are straight men and their stories are worth telling like mm. anyone else's. Mm. So, yeah. Wow. Um, so I know like obviously there's a whole mental process of what that must have been like, you know, having going to running away from what you, what your parents wanted for you, then also coming out to your family um, and like, just the process of that would have been so tough for you, eh? Like, obviously, um, before before the whole process leading up to um, being able to come out to them and tell your family, like, explain that. Like, how was your mental mindset through that? It was hard. Oh, yeah, it was. that was a process. I, um, so I was in my third year of law school, I think, at that yeah. point. I was, like, 100% in depression. I, had, like, stopped eating. I think I was, like, 70 kgs. Which is like, like I'm, I'm 120 at the moment. <laughs> yeah. So I was like almost half the size I was. My God. Just stopped eating um, for like a year. And my parents were like, something's wrong with them. Uh, and, um, and I just knew it's because there was, A, I wasn't doing what I wanted to do with my life. Yeah. You know, when you just like know that there's something God created you to do and you're not doing it, mm. um, it we were like, that's the place I was at. But then on top of that, I was also... <laughs> I was apparently straight at that mm. point. So, and that was another part of my identity I was trying to navigate. Yeah. So I had these two pretty massive things yeah. that I was trying to encounter uh, at the same time. And even on top of that, you've got the the, the battle of, um, because you're in an industry where, it's, where you're at a training actually, yeah. where it's majority just white people. Absolutely. And and you also having that feeling of, like we've talked about it before, we, mm. got, we, went, we met at a Bible college where we were the only four or five Samoans mm. that were there. Yeah. And it's like, man, sometimes we feel, in a sense, that we don't belong in this room yeah. because we look around, our people aren't there, yeah. you know? And so that's 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 something, honestly, I applaud you. But yeah. how was that? Like, like in, the, in the context of drama school? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, it was, I mean, like, I think, like, I hate using the word tough repetitively because, mm. but by default, like, like when I say tough, I, it's not me apologizing for being brown and white spaces. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it is tough. <laughs> to be yeah. a brown person in a space that is not designed for you, you yeah. know, or the way that you think. Because white people in those spaces, they don't have to adjust the way that they see the world because mm. it's catered to the way they see the world. Yeah. Whereas for us, we have to constantly find, uh, readjust the way that we see the world based on spaces like that. Um, it was, uh, I learned a lot in that space. Like I learned a lot about the industry. Uh, I, th- I learned about what I thought was I wanted to do when I left. And yeah. I learned about, you know, you know, schools about acting and the craft and all of that stuff mm-hmm. and stuff that I still use now, you know, yeah. when I direct and do other projects. But um, I lost myself in that process. I think I came out with it. There's a session, there's a, there's a block of work in that, in that, in that uh, school where it's called voice. So voice. Wow. And you have to do a session where you literally walk in and they assess the way that you sound based on your accent. And then they try to neutralize the way you sound so that you sound less of where you come from. So, wow. I walked in and like my accent was pretty neutral to start with, but there was a girl, a Tongan girl in my class who was from Mangri, and uh, her, she had a very like Mangri accent. Mangri <laughs> accent. <laughs> <laughs> and they like bet the shit, uh, bet that out of her throughout three years, so that she just didn't even sound the same person. Wow. And she hated it. Like by the end, she just wasn't even. She didn't pursue it. That's anyway. insane. She was, and they, it's because they're, they're neutralizing us without realizing it yeah. to prepare us for an industry that's not even going to fucking hire us anyway. Yeah. So it's just stupid. Stupid. And uh, people ask me that, you know, oh. do you advise kids to go into those spaces? I'm like, uh, I don't disadvise them to do mm. it. But I, I say do it with caution and do it and have something outside of that space that yeah. still connects you mm. to who you are. Yeah. Mm, Otherwise, wow. you'll lose yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had we had that same experience. Like sometimes 
like with us when we were studying in, in our Bible college, mm. we felt like in a sense we were kind of stuck in this little bubble. Yeah, that we weren't able to connect with the streets, connect with the our totally. people, you know. Yeah, and being on the on the outside of it now and doing this, doing this podcast, it's allowed us to have the avenue of now we're connecting to our people. Now we c- we're able to connect uh, through this platform. Yeah. Um, you know, to our people and and the story that they have to tell. Yeah, and I love that, man. I f- I feel like. Do you feel like, like you're in that zone now? Totally, yeah. And like, like you guys, like I guess in the same space, because I did come out and then ended up in the very western white part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I existed in that space for a long time yeah. before I was like, okay, I gotta go home. I gotta go back to my community. Uh, yeah. And it was hard. The bridge back into the community was yeah. hard because I was white. Yeah. <laughs> I told <laughs> myself fair, I was, yeah. you know, essentially working like a white person for so many years that mm. I had to convince my community again yeah. that they could trust me. Right. That, that they could trust me with their stories and they could yeah, trust yeah, me yeah, to, yeah. To, to do it with honor and respect. Yeah. Um, and that was a hard process to like overcome. And I think now I, 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 I can say I arrived back home. Yeah. Like I think yeah. I'm home now. Yeah. And like um, I feel more uh, of working to purpose this year mm-hmm. than I have ever in my entire career. Wow. That's so awesome, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah, because I, I came home. And, you know, like the machine, I, I, I was able to function as part of the machine again. Yeah. So the machine can work. Yeah. I love that, bro. Love That's that awesome. Bro. I definitely relate to being able to come home and feeling like it gives you a sense of a really good identity again. You totally. Know? Yeah. Um, it really, it's like, it's, it's, it's that experience, that home feeling mm. that I feel as Pacifica people, we carry that everywhere we go. Yeah, 100%. whether it's you're at my table, I'm at yours, or or like you're at my house, or wherever it is where yeah. we meet. It's I feel home with you. I feel home with our people. Yeah, and I think that's something beautiful. And I think like to encourage you, like I definitely feel like that's something you could offer with what you do. Yeah, with your work is totally. having people. Maybe there's someone completely in the other side of the world watching your work and feeling at home with with the stuff that you do. Yeah, you know? it it uh, and I, but the you know the coming home thing is is yeah. important for me. I think it was supposed to happen at this stage of my life because, you know, I'm I'm 33. I'm single. I yeah. have no children. Mm. So um, all my siblings are all having kids and buying houses and getting married. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they're leaving legacies for the community yeah. by just existing and having children. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I may never have a kid. So what do I have to leave this community? Mm. And Cool. And yeah. it's stories, and that's why I'm so passionate about these stories because these are my kids. Yeah. You know, if that's the one thing I get to leave in the world, if I can't leave a child, I can leave these stories. Oh, and that, that, and that's why I'm heavily passionate about these things because I might n- never have a kid. Yeah. Mm. And um, so I treat these like children. I treat them like the children that I'll leave. You know, and I, and I'll be happy if I, I never have a kid. I can leave these, and I, I left a legacy of some sort. Wow. Mm. Wow, man. <laughs> What's up? <Yeah. laughs> oh, this is the vulnerability you wanted? <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. That was very hot, mate. <laughs> okay, so, um, okay. Are we good? All right, so, um, I was, I was going to talk about, like, so the fact that you were in, you were in acting, acting yeah. school in, um, in New Zealand and then, um, you came over here to, in the industry, right? So yeah. you were in the industry in New Zealand as well, right? Yeah. So, um, what, were there some comparisons between Australia and New Zealand? And if there were, like, well, what do you reckon? Oh, uh, yeah, the comparisons are huge. Like, yeah. um, in, in New Zealand, you can confidently say that there's a, a, a Pacific part of the industry yeah. that mm. exists. Right. There's always Pacific people, artists, whether that's in theatre or screen, yeah. that are always creating work. So there's just a constant cycle of someone Man. making something or doing something. Yeah. And that's why they're always so active in New Zealand. Because, mm. But they've set that up. You know, there was a drama school in New Zealand that was just specifically Pacific. So really? Called Pipa, yeah. Oh, the wow. Pacific Island Performing Arts School. Yeah. And wow. so you had kids going in there and getting a, a qualification to as actors, dancers. <gasps> yes. Bro, that's yeah. That's um, and that. And they were all being cycled through there. So yeah. literally any Pacific person, most 90%, mm. like the three girls and sis, the leads, mm. yeah. they all came through Pipa. From there? Yeah. Wow, that's cool. So they had a school, which yeah. was, was creating um, creatives who were qualifi- qualified, but also had the experience. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, we don't have that here, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Like this is so yeah, new. Like exactly. you know, it's news to my ears. Yeah, so. Totally. So, um, 
that's what the difference is, is that there is not even, uh, you know, like with The Rock, that's being filmed here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, most of them are Kiwi actors, which is a great. But yeah, because, I've noticed you know, that, yeah. But because Hollywood's first um, point of call when they think Pacific is to turn to New Zealand. Yeah, wow. Because they have a reputation for creating this yeah. story. But the thing is, like, we actually have a bigger population bigger of community people in here. this country. Yeah. And the thing is, we just don't, we have, we're not known for creating work. Mm. Wow. And so, like, a big goal of mine is to, to go, if Hollywood wants to cast an Islander, they should go, not just, oh, New Zealand, they should go, oh, Western Sydney. Western Sydney. And that's a flip, you know, because, th- and we ha- I know it's, we're, we're not far off, far off, but I think we had to start somehow. Yeah. And I think this year we started doing that properly. We are, yeah. Where people are now looking at Western Sydney in a way that mm. goes, man, they're, Making stories and there's actors there. Yeah, I yeah. Didn't know there were island actors in Western Sydney. There are, and there's new ones that we just made this year. Like, yeah, you know? and the thing is, I would never have known that was possible if we just didn't start. So yeah, yeah. that's the huge difference: is that visibility in New Zealand's huge mm-hmm. uh, in the in the art scene, and for yeah. us, it's almost non-existent. So that's awesome. You know, for now, for now, for now, for yeah, now. for now, and we're, we're going to change that. I think it, it. I think it'll move faster. Definitely, you know. We just need, you just need more people to take more initiative. You totally. Know? And, and we just need people to, to unite as opposed to yeah. like tear people down, which is oh, the other yeah. problem our community yeah. does. Is they see someone trying to do something good, whether they like the work or not, they'll drag it. Yeah, yeah. Poppy. It's all Poppy Syndrome, man. <laughs> yeah. We're so bad for it, eh? Um, but we can't afford to do that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Not in Australia. No. Like, we ought to just go, cool, not a fan of the work, but I'm a fan of the hustle. Yeah. yeah. And I'm a fan of you trying to, like, Raise our people up, so I'll support that. Yeah, hundred. Love that. Um, so right now we got also Frosty, who's on uh, on our phone call right now, and he's gonna hello, ask. Hello, he's hello. gonna be asking his um, via some questions. So go ahead, also. Sabozo. What's up? What's up? How's, How's everyone going? going? Good, good, good. 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 Missing you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, thank you. You know how it is, mate. We'll go to school, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Go ahead, um, yeah, sweet. So let's just go into it. This is a personal question about you, um, Sophia. Yeah, bro, hit me. Um, so I watched the documentary on both worlds where uh, you had a yeah you had a um, performance um, that you had written about climate change in Tokelo yeah. and the future of Tokelo, but also uh, your worries about uh, maybe getting the, the approval from the Tokeloan community. And my question is, at times, how hard is it to be a creative and have a vision on your heart that you want to see come to pass, however, also trying to balance the um, cultural aspect and uh, respect for culture and um, and community? Oh, mm, that's, that's a big one. Uh, well, I haven't heard the Both Worlds documentary come out of anyone's mouth for a while, so <laughs> you really did your research. I appreciate that. Um, uh, you know, it is hard. Um, it's um, with that with that show in particular. You know, I I was uh, really conscious that I'm one of very few Tokelauans who are out there yeah. trying to tell our story, but in the same breath, like um, Tokelau is, you know, and, and you probably heard in that doco, like. They say Togelau will be underwater in 50 years. Yeah. Mm. Which is yeah. In, in, in my lifetime. I could still be alive in that yeah. time. So you have to balance out like uh, how pressing the issue is to tell the story, how pressing the story is versus um, uh, the obstacles that could potentially be there. Togelauans are very insular people. So they're very yeah. different from the Samoans where they're very outward, you yeah. know, very expressive of what we want to do. Yeah. You know, we're very like goal driven and very like sometimes perceived as very aggressive mm. towards our goals but that's why we're everywhere yeah because we we we, we, we chase our, our goals very actively that's true the yeah. are very not not that they're not goal driven they're very um content with smaller things mm. which is reflective of the way that togelau is as a country um smaller country hard to leave very isolated so yeah. they're just yeah. happy yeah um so uh, the way that I approach Samoan work uh, and Samoan content and the way that I approach Tagalogan content is very different because with Tagalogans, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, easily, it's more easy to offend someone. Oh, wow. Because yeah. it's, so, wow. it's so small. The community is so small. True, yeah. 
So with that show in particular, I really had to like, that's why you saw me take that show back to my hometown mm. and seek approval. Yeah. Because I know if I didn't do that in, in uh, 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 for Togelau and get the blessing of a Togelau elder, um, I would have been dragged um, by the Togelau community mm. very heavily. Yeah. But also just like an internal thing was, I I feel it's a huge responsibility as a Togelau in this world. 100%, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I can count three three or four of us actively trying to tell stories in uh, in the film industry wow. and the theater industry combined throughout the world. And that wow. for an entire country is a huge responsibility. Um, so I don't take that very, I don't take that lightly. And so um, with Togelau, you know, separate to Samoa, with, you know, it's, I, I like to relate it to a metaphor in regards to dance. Mm. In Siva Samoa, there's solo dancing. In, in Togelau and dance, there's, in Togelau, there's not a single solo dance. Everyone dances. Oh, wow. oh wow. wow! Everyone, yeah. So I, um, I have to approach my work the same way that we approach our dance. Hatele, yeah. we call it. Everyone. So, so when I take a story from Dogelo, I have to take Dogelo with me, and wow. that means seeking it in the same way we we siva, or we call Hatele. Um, and so that that that's hugely important to me. That's crazy. Yeah. Love that. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> From my point of view, watching um, that documentary, just how how passionate you were mm. about getting that message across, mm. and how creative it was uh, as well. Yeah. But also, yeah. also having that worry about um, uh, how they would take it, how the Tokelau community would take it. Also, yeah. Yeah. not just from a cultural side, but also a religious side as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, also battling current day situations like climate control, yeah. you know, uh, climate change, sorry, like science and the conflict with science and religion, with how we grew up as mm. uh, Polynesians. Yeah. Um, you know, there's certain things that we say, like, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah. But sometimes we don't necessarily know that uh, it is broken mm. or that we're, totally. we're heading, um, you know, we're heading to to that breaking point. Yeah. And I just want to ask, you know, how important is it to get those, um, to get these stories out, even though, oh, sorry, and to raise awareness, how important is it to you mm. within our community that we're aware of uh, these situations? Mm. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, I, 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 uh, when you were talking, I, I thought about, um, uh, as artists, like, um, art isn't passive, you know. Mm. Actually, art, yeah. art is a form of activism, and that's the way we should use it. Mm. Especially as brown people, who like um, it, it, we have to use art as a way to to, to activate community and mobilize them. Yeah. You know, with the conversations around um, climate change. You know, when you read yeah. the paper and watch the news, uh, and you know, white people are spreading facts at us or statistics, it, it dehumanizes what the problem is. Yeah. And so, for me, yeah. telling that story was important for Togelau because it humanized, what, it, it took away all the numbers and all the mm. scientific things yeah, and yeah. actually just put it back on what was, what was important. And when you lose land, you don't just lose land. You lose, yeah. you lose the vessel in which your culture has been formed on. Mm. So when we lose Togelau and we have no reference point for Togelau in the future, like we can yeah. reference Samoa right now, imagine yeah. not having that reference point anymore in the future. What, where do we call home? And, you know, for me, that yeah. play was based on what then becomes of Togelowans in the future when they don't know, they have no reference to a physical place as their motherland. Wow. You know? Yeah. I, and how yeah, un I saw that. unnerving and how uh, uh, uneasy that would make us feel, make them feel in the future mm. about their place in the world. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that with your, I guess... I mean, uh, I'm going to use this word that I learned in U12 drama. I don't even know if it. <laughs> Come to you. I don't even Come know if it even. Yeah. I guess at the end it was a monologue or a. Um, yeah, it was a monologue. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, still remember. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> get, get me on your next, uh, you know. Nah, it was, um, <laughs> but in your, in your closing monologue, you definitely show that with the. Uh, I think it was closing lines of. Um, my love for Tokelau cannot be saved uh, from dying. So when Tokelau dies, I will die too. Mm. Um, so if you if you're listening or watching and you don't 
uh, know about this. So the concept of this play was that with climate climate change, Tokelau uh, might not be here in the next 50 years. Mm-hmm. And it was a group of Tokelauans, um, correct me if I'm wrong, from Tokelau and also overseas Tokelauans that have flew back to Tokelau. Yeah. 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 Um, so they were Australian. So the context yeah. of it is, yeah, like uh, there's two Tokelauans from Tokelau and then there's two Australian Tokelauans who are. Uh, who go back to the low in its last moment. Yeah. 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 And I think that's, that's a powerful statement as yeah. Tokelo is, is the, the water is rising yeah. and all that's, um, you know, I mean, it's a beautiful monologue and I don't want to butcher it, but that really, um, that really hit hard, hit home at the end that when, when Tokelo dies, I will die too. Yeah. And, and it, it's an interesting line as well, because in the, the way that people receive it, 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 but in the context of the play, we don't, we don't realize it unless we watch it, but, um, all those the Tokelau and Australians who go back who have never connected Tokelau but decided to do it in its last moment they sacrificed themselves for the country so they actually go yeah, down wow. with it as their, as their way of offering um, what they hadn't done in the years before that so yeah wow uh, it's such a yeah <sighs> such a powerful one of <laughs> yeah oh thank you yeah <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I just got some questions. Uh, well, I think I'll just say one more, maybe. Yeah, um, go ahead, also. I was, yeah, I was also reading, um, that after you, I think I was reading on, uh, anyway, sorry, I forgot where I read it, but I was reading that after university and after your studies. Uh, you were you and a friend were uh, annoyed that there wasn't much jobs out there, mm. acting jobs for Polynesians and Pacific Islanders, not much roles out there. Mm. Yeah. So that's why you had come up with a play uh, by the name of Promises of Pia. Uh, Pia? Yeah, it was a film, yeah. yeah, it's yeah to sort of create, so if there wasn't jobs out there, that you would create your own avenue, that you create your own jobs. And not only that, that, uh, you also would create jobs for other Samo- uh, sorry, other Polynesian actors out there mm-hmm. to get some work and to get um, some exposure. Mm-hmm. And I want to ask, how important is that to to create not only a way for your own self, yeah. but once you are in a position that you you are able to make moves, to also provide a way for other Pacific Islanders to step up and also to be encouraged to um, to follow their dreams as well. Mm. Uh, you know, I, uh, when I came into this industry, I came in very selfishly, and I just wanted to be famous. That was my goal. I yeah. learned pretty, wow. pretty quickly that actually that is so um, the opposite of what we are as people, yeah. as specific people. Mm. And I was fooled into believing that that was what I wanted to do when I started. And I learned very, very quickly that um, the industry I was I was trained uh, for didn't give a flying fuck about me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As a brown yeah, person, true. and so I had to go back to what was important, and it was about thinking collectively. Mm. And um, as wow. a, as a Pacifica person, I'm I'm one part of a machine. You know, if if my part yeah. isn't working or someone else's part isn't working, the machine doesn't move. Yeah, stay still. Wow. So I um, I um. I started to approach work in that way. And like uh, my friend who you referenced earlier, her name's Sanal. She's the creator of Sis. Sorry, yes. Yeah, yeah. But she's the creator of Sis now. Oh, wow. So her and wow, I have worked very closely yeah. for many years. And if you look at the, the, the things that we're both doing, we're cut from the same same cloth because yeah. our, our motivations and, and as artists are the same. We have to uplift our people and it has to be from the young people. Yeah. You know, I, of course, I you know, we tell the stories of, of our entire community, but... When we're gone, we have to be able to leave a world that is um, is uh, usable and uh, is is um, uh, good enough for the young people. And so that's become my focus as a, as an artist now, mm. uh, beyond myself. You know, I spend more time behind the camera now because my time's done. Yeah, <laughs> it's not done. Like, yeah. I've, but like, it's time to pass the torch. So if that yeah. means I, I I fade into the background, then I'm willing to do that. If it means it uplifts our young people, and especially you know. In Australia, you know, I've lived in diaspora here, in diaspora in New Zealand, yeah. and the differences are very, very clear. In New Zealand, like, there's so much more room to grow, but the Pacific community has recognition in some degree, and they've earned it. They've worked very, very hard to get yeah, there. Yeah. In Australia, they don't 
give a flying fuck mm. about us. They yeah. don't care. Yeah. Unless you play sport in this country, <laughs> elite sport. Come on. Yeah. Even then, you're still a number. Yeah. You're just another number. You're you're part of the forty-seven percent who makes up the NRL. Um, if 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 we if we um if in this country they don't care, we have to. So what we what what our, my goal is to do, and there's so many more of us out there doing it, is that we we can't just be powerless in the in in, in this place. We have to take control, yeah. Yeah. and so we have to make spaces for ourselves. If that means we have to pummel our own life savings into it, yeah. which I don't, <laughs> it means I pummel my whole life savings into it. Yeah. And if it means that I can look at these young people on set and go, man. They can see a future. There's a pathway for them in this in this industry, mm. um, and they feel proud of the work that they've done. Mm. I can die tomorrow, and I'll be happy. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Man. That's, yeah. Putting it all on the line for our people. Man. I have to, you know, awesome, because man. I've I've been a young person before, yeah. and I and you know yeah. I sometimes look at these kids and I, and I wish and I look at these kids and I I, I go. And I wish someone looked out for me like that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. how I. That's how I work. I wish someone did the same for me when I was young and I had this dream, you know. And if if I couldn't have it, then at least I can give it to other kids. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, well, I love that, bro. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, guys. <laughs> wow. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. So, so. Awesome. You can you can definitely see that as well with what you were saying with being behind the scenes and um, kind of just pushing our people to to do better and get better. You mm. can also see that with the new yeah. your new series coming out with Adamara series and uh, is it Diety? Yeah, Diety. Yeah. Oh yeah, Diety the yeah. series. Yeah, um, with having youth from the area. Yeah, um, you know also something that is really close to home with um, the Parramatta series with young Pacific Islander boys trying to, I guess it's trying to make it in rugby league and yeah. following their dreams in that. And well, obviously we don't know much about it, but we're looking forward for it to come out, but yeah. you can definitely see within your work yeah, yeah. trying to lift up our people and produce something, um, you know, tell the stories of the area. And that's something that we, we say, you know, on the also table talk is that we never, so for those of you that are listening and maybe you don't know that we all met in Bible college yeah. in, in it. So there was also this, I guess, this stigma around that with uh, coming from the area yeah. and also yeah. that, that kind of being a changes guy or being a holy guy, yeah. or, you know, forgetting where we came from and forgetting, uh, you know, our people out there. And yeah. we always, we always say this to each other is that we never want to silence the voices of the streets. Yeah. We yeah. never want to, we never want to silence the voices of, of people's stories, whether or not it aligns up with what we believe or not. Yeah. These are our people. Yeah. And just to get that story out there and yeah. to, to speak on it and I think you do that in such a creative way and it's mm. it's crazy how you're doing this and yeah. man, I just want to encourage you before I hang up this phone and let you know let the Usos continue and mm. let you guys continue I just wanted to say thank you so much for this opportunity and for me to get to ask you some questions and yeah yeah, just wish you all the best thank you bro thank you for the questions too it's yeah. good, good reminders for me as well you know I get carried <laughs> away too in the, in the glamour of it so it's good to, yeah. to humble my humble my ass. <laughs> 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 and remember, uh, you know, awesome. just remember the bigger picture. Mm. So, so. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, uh, I think that's it from me. Waves, your name, Shasta. Thank you so much for Thanks, uh, everything. Uh, I'm gonna get back to my busy life in isolation. <laughs> have, have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so take care. We love you, bro. Enjoy, bro. We love right, you, bro. Love you guys. All right, so right now we want to um, actually talk about a conversation. Uh, we want to conversate about a series that you got mm. you got working on now. Yeah. Eh? So obviously it's um, Parramatta series. Yeah. So tell us about that. Oh, Parramatta series. All okay, right. So I pitched this show, right? Maybe yeah. this, this is a history, the backstory of the story. I wanted to write a story based on my little brother who uh, was in that world pursuing footy um, and you know, being his family, seeing the highs and lows of that world. Yeah. That, that, that's the part of uh, boys pursuing that sport that we 
unless you know someone, you don't see the the sort of the lows of it. Yeah. And mm. my brother had lows, you know. Mm. So I wanted to, to tell a story that was sort of truthful to the full experience. Wow. Um, but I pitched that show to our network like four years ago. Yeah. And um, it was these four biological women. And they just like straight up said to me, oh, no one's going to watch that. Oh. Well, and I was like, well, why? And they were like, oh, it's about island, like four islanders. And I was like, so? Yeah. They're like, you need you need to diversify that cast. And I was like, I, I don't need to do anything. Yeah. So I was staunch about it. Like I tried to do it and then I took it back and then I just sat there for a while and I brought it back to life last year when I was asked to be part of an incubator program at ICE yeah. in yeah. Parramatta. Um, I pitched some shows, they picked uh, a bunch of them mm. and then I decided to do uh, two, which is Parramatta and Daddy. So yeah, yeah Para is about essentially like in a, a, nut, a nutshell about four island boys um, pursuing the dream. Mm. Uh, for me, like that story of the boys in the NRL is sort of like in the DNA of Pacific people in yeah. Sydney. Yeah. You know? 100%. Whether we like, whether we know people personally uh, as family or we know friends, someone, everyone in, in, in the Pacific community in Sydney will know someone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's a part of our, our story as, as people in Sydney. And um, so it's about these boys uh, trying to pursue the sport, but really it's about the sport sort of serves as the backdrop. The really what the story is about following yeah. these island boys. You have, have a dream yeah. to pursue something do better for their lives while trying to grow up in the city the biggest city in, us, in the continent um, and uh, while being young and also the pressures of family so mm. yeah. that's sort of what the story is about it has a sort of overarching story to it mm-hmm. uh, which, which you need to tune in to sort of get the point of yeah. uh, <laughs> well, otherwise it's too much giveaway but um, yeah I mean I, I wanted to approach a, a social theme in, the, in this work and uh, I think well, a lot of people don't realise is that for every boy that makes it, there's like so many boys who don't. Who so what happens yeah, yeah, to those yeah. boys yeah. after they've been in that world so intensely for so many years? What becomes of them? Even you know? from from young, you know, yeah. like young, young. Yeah. And so you know, it's also like a, a call to arms for the elite world to like be more active and actually what becomes of those boys after, after they yeah. sort of you know leave that world. So I mean, sometimes the story is so tragic. You know, mm. my, my brother has it's a reality. His friends also, you know, who, you know. Who took their lives yeah. so, you know because they saw no option after that yeah they were in it from such a young age they came out you know later in life and then they were like oh now what what? Do they know? yeah yeah wow. i never thought about that like, yeah and yeah. we don't we it don't. was yeah you know. and there's stories so many mm. so many stories that's last year i know there were like a couple in northern queensland mm. islanders who just were like i don't i broke my leg they broke their leg and that was it yeah yeah they couldn't see a life after that yeah wow. i think it was because Oh, obviously, it was because of the, all the effort and all the the, the stuff yeah. they've they've mm. put into that, and also um, making that place their safe safe place as well, and the the fact that that safe place got taken away from exactly. them exactly, and that then there was also no rehabilitation for them yeah. like, in regards to like what do we do with these boys now, mm. which I think is a responsibility that someone has to take yeah uh, in their work they can't just take them mm. raise them and then dump them. Jeez, I'm excited for this. Uh, one. Wow. I yeah. think that's that's definitely going to be hitting a lot of hearts and you know a lot of people yeah. um, who definitely can relate to the story or uh, actually also build an awareness. Totally, because mm. I'm I'm pretty blindsided on that too. So yeah, I mean, hearing that story just makes me feel like, damn, like we got to hit, we got to look out for those souls who have to, don't yeah. make it. Yeah, and I think the b- uh, brown boys don't get a good, not enough. Um, you know, like the world is so centered around, and so it should be around feminism and all these things. But I think what people forget about brown boys is, yeah, we're men, but uh, actually we um we still suffer from the same obstacles that colonialism fucked all of us over. With. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like, we're, we're men, but we're still brown men. And, yeah, you know, we're still on the spectrum of society at the bottom. Mm. Yeah. So um, you know, we don't get enough props for th- for that and sort of what our men are doing yeah. to uplift us in a way that that isn't recognized uh, uh, wholly, you know? And yeah. Like I think about my little brother and I think about my family put all of our pressure, our dream, hopes and dreams on my little brother making it. And yeah. the, that pressure was huge on him. Yeah. As a, he's, he was young and like, you know, him making it or not was such a big burden on him that um, was unfair, you know? <sighs> It was unfair yeah. to him yeah. to have to do that for us. And it was unfair for him to have to like, think about uh, raising our entire family through his dream. Like oh. it was unfair on him. Um, and I think it, you know, it took its toll in many ways on him. Like he's still in that world, surprise, which is great. Uh, and he took time off, went to France and came back. 
Um, nice, nice. He had a kid, which made him kind of a, really want to give it a good go. Yeah. So, um, but the pressure that we put on our boys to mm. succeed in that environment is heavy. Yeah. And um, for me, personally, the story is just me saying thank you to my brother for carrying us for so many years mm. through his dream. Wow. Yeah. I love that, man. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out on something that you said earlier before was how you brought the idea to uh, a group of women. Yeah. Uh, and they wanted you to diversify the, the cast. You've not only not done that, <laughs> <laughs> but you've made the whole company and the whole casting, behind, oh, not only the cast, but also crew. The, the crew yeah. behind the crew, it. everyone there. Um, Pol- Polynesian as well, so... Yeah. I um, love that. Oh, I, um, I, uh, when I say, like, if I'm going to say for the people and tell stories for the people, by the people, <laughs> you have to learn, you have to grow the people. Come like, I'm, I'm well aware that, like, um, we're starting from scratch in Western Sydney. So, you know, our, our set is, yeah, it's professional, but it's also a u- university in yeah. many ways because we're, learn- we're teaching people yeah. how to do things from scratch, actors on, and crew. And that is, like, the investment that we have to make in order to build industry for yeah. ourselves. Um, and that means having Pacific people in every single part that we can. And I think like even, I think from the shoot we did the other weekend, 85% of our crew and cast were Pacific women. Nah. No. It was it was huge. That's awesome. You know, so women are out there too, like, you know, trying to build the village, mm. the rest of us. So, um, yeah, I'm, when I say I'm like hugely passionate about this, I think sometimes it's blinding. Like yeah. people are like, well, it's intense. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but think about the normal industry and like, we're so used to seeing white people uh, in entire casts and we never question it. We never question it. Never yeah. question it. We never question it. There's like a whole show full of white people. Yeah. yeah. Like, no one should question us ever yeah. Yeah. for what we're doing here. You know? I'm just saying. Although at some point I think that, you know, we do have to like diversify. <laughs> you know, my true high school can't just be someone. <laughs> I thought about that, but I thought, you know, it's the starting stage. Every opportunity I can make at yeah. this point will be mm. for someone's or mm. Islanders. Yeah, yeah. That really makes sense. Yeah. I love that. But you've actually um, brought also along for with us. I have. One of you, you work with, eh? Yeah, I have brought one of the many um, uh, young Pacific uh, people from Western Sydney yeah, uh, who came through and auditioned in part of the village and... Uh, yeah, he's had, uh, I don't know, to, to share his experience and sort of, what is words of wisdom? So um, uh, his name is Brendan Tapuai. Yep, yep. Uh, coming straight in from uh, Bonnie Rig. Come on. Let's oh. go, Zo. Let's go, <laughs> man. Uh, yeah, so come through. Come through, Zo. Come through, bro. Welcome, welcome. Hey, All right, Brendan, hey. welcome to the Uso Table Talk, table bro. Talk. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> How do you feel? Pretty <laughs> good, pretty <laughs> really good. It's good to be here. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Uh, I'll leave it to you. Yeah, so this yeah. is uh, Brendan Tapoy. He, um, Brendan came through uh, audition for Para, yep. uh, I think in the, last, the third, because we had sort of three phases of auditioning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the first happened in January and then the coronavirus hit. And so we just oh. cast, we cast people like without auditioning, yeah. which was the second phase. And then the coronavirus hit and we lost cast members and we had to restart. Oh, wow. And Brendan came through the third phase. Um, and um, I remember we did, uh, we were doing auditions by Zoom, and um, he read for one character, and we were like, oh, yeah, okay. But then he read for another, and literally all of us were like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 like, we just, like, sat there, like, after he left the audition, we were like, that kid is fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was, like, going into community. And this is the thing, is, like, you, this is where you find them. Because yeah. they, like, uh, they haven't, I don't know if they have an interest in it or not, but they don't realise they're so good at it. Yeah. But, I, I mean, uh, I'm interested in Brendan's sort of uh, story behind what made him do it. Like as yeah, a, as a as a Samoan kid from Western Sydney, never done having done it before. Uh, sort of what what was what was your sort of inspiration to seeing a, an audition person and going, I might give it a go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. introduce um, yourself, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, my name is Brendan Tapui. Yeah, I'm 18 years old. Um, uh, my ancestry roots are from uh, my ancestry roots are to Fa'ala Paloli in Samoa <laughs> and uh, in Savai and Sangone in Savai also. Hey. And my oh. diaspora roots are Bonerik, Western Sydney. Yo, that's where it is. That's where it's at. Yeah. And so, um, just to answer your question, I guess. <laughs> 
Honestly, I, I wasn't doing anything at the time. Yeah. Uh, the the one thing that I loved to do, which was play footy, yeah. um, which is, you know, I guess a lot of the boys in Western Sydney can relate to. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't do that. We couldn't play footy because of COVID. Yeah. And so I guess my motivation was to just to get busy, just to start doing something. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I wasn't working at the time, so I had no money. Yeah. Um, and so I got tagged in an audition post, like uh, Fia said, um, by one of my cousins in NZ. Mm. Uh, shout out to Tony Laulu <laughs> over in NZ. Shout out, bro. Uh, you, without you, uh, I, I wouldn't have auditioned. So yeah, I saw his audition post on Instagram, uh, applied for audition. Um, and I auditioned in my garage because I auditioned in my garage because uh, some of the lines in the audition script had uh, swearing lines. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 yeah, and best my, place to audition. Bro. My audition garage. was on a Sunday as well, oh. so oh. all my family was inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> Took it out to the garage, auditioned, and um, nice, yeah, I'm here now. So I'm here now. It's crazy, bro. Well done, man. So what, what was the process like? Like, um, just auditioning and then making your way until you're in front of the lens. Was how, like, was it? Were you excited? Were you like? Yeah, I was. I was freaking out. I was freaking out. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't know what to expect. I, yeah. I got on set and I was like. Man, like I'm standing in front of a camera, like yeah. <laughs> I got the heck. I had to memorize lines as well. Mm, yeah, like the only time I had to memorize lines were for like a speech or like for Sunday school. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh so it was crazy, man. Like, That's awesome, bro. I still yeah. can't believe I'm doing this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the thing with uh, Brendan is he's just constantly in disbelief. Mm. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, like it's just the, always the shaking of the head. Yeah. And I think I I, I showed him a, a, a cut, a first cut of um, uh, Para. Mm. What what did that feel like for you, seeing yourself in that context? Ah, huh. for the first um, time. <laughs> like you said, disbelief. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, I was speechless because, like, for me, it looks weird and it sounds weird watching yeah. and hearing myself yeah. on screen. And so, like, the first time seeing that and uh. hearing it, I was like, mm. I was speechless. I, I didn't know what to say. Like. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's me! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, man, like everybody's me. <laughs> like, if True. I'm reacting that way, like imagine yeah. my family, like yeah, because yeah. yeah. like as know. like as a brown boy, like in Western Sydney, like playing rugby is the only thing yeah. I thought I'd get up to, and like I've always wanted to like study in uni. Mm. I, I just never knew what I would study, and so like becoming an actor, that was like probably the last thing yeah. I, I would have expected myself doing, yeah. or like seeing myself doing. So like. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, man. Did you just call yourself an actor? <laughs> yes, it's the energy That's we good, do. Bro, yeah. bro. Because you know what? A lot of the actors, because a lot of them are new, so yeah. like they've never done it before, mm. and they're always reluctant to say they're actors. Mm. And I'm like, you're an actor. You're an you actor, just bro. did it on a professional set. You're, you're now an actor. Mm, come on. And so I love hearing them when they like confirm it for themselves. Yeah. Um, um, what does it mean for you as a as a, an 18-year-old Salmon boy from Bonnie Rig, Western Sydney, um, why do you think what you do, what you've done, is important for mm. other Pacifica boys? Yeah. Um, I guess so that, like, other boys from Western Sydney know mm. that they can make it too. Because, like, yeah. um, I think you've said it before, like, we, we don't see a lot of Islanders uh, in, in the film industry. Like, uh, like our community is very small in the, mm. in the film industry. And yeah. so, like, I think if we see more and more of our Usos getting into acting, get into... Yeah getting into the film industry, then, you know, like we'll, we'll only have more and more flowing through mm. like the system. And so 100%. I think that like me being in, like doing this acting stuff, it's um, it's been very inspirational to a lot of the Usos out there. Like mm. even today, I, I still get messages from all, all my footy mates, mm. like all my Samoan footy mates, all my Aussie footy mates. They'll ask, they'll ask me like, when the series is dropping. Yeah, like, the series? It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like they'll, they'll be asking me like what it's dropping on. And like, I, I'm just surprised by the amount of the sport that's coming through, yeah. like, mm. with all my footy mates. And so, like, I guess me being where I'm at right now is is very, very inspirational to, mm. to all those who's out there. So yeah. Yeah. How's, oh, sorry. You go, you go. Um, how's your experience has been like with uh, working with um, Fia and the, the the rest of the cast and crew? Oh, it's 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 amazing. I love it. Eh? Cause yeah. like um, I don't think too many people know that uh like our, our shoot days yeah. and um, yeah, our shoot days they go for ages, bro. Like, <laughs> That's a word, like bro. we'll start at like seven a.m. in the morning, 
And we'll finish at like. Well, the last uh, the last shoot day was last weekend. We we started what six a.m. and yeah. we finished at ten thirty p.m. Oh my! God. Yeah, so they they long days. <laughs> and so yeah, the long bro, ass days. Like you, you, you think that you get you'd get tired of it. Yeah. But honestly, like mm. being surrounded with like people of the same color, yeah, 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 people with the 100%. same goals, same mindset. True. Like you never get tired of it. So yeah, it's like hundred percent. Yeah, you, like your body's tired, but your yeah. mind's like you, you want to be there. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Lo- I love it, man. I love it. That must be such a, a bonus for you, eh? Like yeah. being able, not only being able to try something new, love it, but also being able to do it with people who not only look like you, but also have the same mm. dreams as you. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think it's definitely going to show in the final product, like what it, whatever it looks like. Mm. It's definitely going to show that you guys genuinely love yeah. what you are doing, yeah. you know, cast and crew and and everyone behind it. Yeah, it's been really cool. Like, uh, I mean, uh, Brandy could probably speak to it, but like. What I never really thought about when we started this was that we would create a, f- a family of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. uh, and I never thought about it. I was only ever really thought about it in regards to the work. I was like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, the actors and the crew. They just but it's like, we, we can... What I really miss about New Zealand was because the work was generated a lot, you could bump yeah. into another island actor and remember each other yeah. and have a conversation. Yeah, And right. I could never do that as an actor here because I... No way the fucking yeah. island is acting. <laughs> True, yeah. You know? yeah. So like now I can like, if I bump into someone who was involved, mm. I can be like, oh, you know, we can talk mm. creatively. 100%. What about yeah. the art? Because yeah. we've created, yeah. we've started to generate an industry Space. where we can do that. Love that. So now we have like this really weird, <laughs> annoying, a beautiful family yeah. that nobody asked for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's beautiful yeah. and it makes sense to who we are. Yeah, hundred percent. We function as family. That's the way we are. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, we we actually got to see a little snippet of the trailer. Um, mm. You got, you Oof. showed us some some shorts, eh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I showed you the trailer to Para last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, honestly, like from what we saw, it just we're excited, bro. We're honestly excited to see what it looks like. Thank you. As a, as the whole the whole project. Yeah. But um, honestly, like, uh, what was it like for for you, Brendan? Um. What would you say was some of your favorite times in in, in shooting? Sharks, man, that's there's a lot, there's a, there's a, there's yeah. a lot to, to pinpoint. I guess, um, I guess one one moment for me was yeah. like uh, we we're shooting the scene for Parramatta, um, and my character Atonio, who's um, ooh, yeah, nice. my my character Atonio in in the Parramatta series, uh, he's. In this scene, he's feeling lonely. He's yeah. feeling um, he's feeling isolated. You know, he, he has to make his parents proud over in NZ, and yeah. he, he has to make his team proud. But he just feels like he's letting everyone down. And um, like this scene, um, he just feels so alone. And I, I remember sitting in that scene, and just feeling every every emotion that Anthony was feeling. Yeah. Like um, I I remember like just picturing all my family, uh, both. Both in this life and yeah. and yeah. those who have passed on, I I remember just picturing them along the sidelines of the field. Wow! Yeah, mm. and I it, it sticks with me to this day because yeah. like in that scene, um, I know that like I'm acting in that scene, but at the same time I'm not. Yeah. Mm. Because like the things that Atsunio is experiencing, the things that he's he's thinking, it's it's what us boys in the west in western mm. sydney we, we go through that on like on a weekly basis yeah. real, man. so that like that's one experience that stood out to me like just um feeling all the love and support from my family both in this life and and those who have passed so like yeah, yeah that, that's one experience that's stood out to me like to this day so bro yeah. that's crazy yeah, that's cool that's insane man. and it shows you know what i'll say about brendan um and he raises a good point because he was like he didn't feel like he was acting in yeah. that scene and I'm like and that's the thing yeah. acting is an acting you're just using a part of your life that you haven't accessed for a while Yeah, and you're using it to yeah. inform a character yeah. and that's it and this is why these young people are so good like Brendan Moni like um, uh, James like just kids who like literally in January this year would never have gone I'm going to be an actor yeah. <laughs> you know never, what I mean never would have thought no like no one came into mm. this year going I'm yeah. going to be an actor you know none no, of these people did we didn't come in this year <laughs> thinking that we're going to be a podcast yeah. <laughs> but True. like you, they've come in and they've kind of um, they've realised actually you know acting isn't a thing that certain people do it's mm. actually just as if you can provide the pathway 
you, you realize the only thing you need for acting is life. Mm-hmm. And you just use it yeah. in the way that you can. And Brendan's, um, Brendan's really good at it. He's very good at being able to access emotion. I don't know what from. Well, I don't know who broke his heart. But <laughs> who hurt you, bro? Um, no, but you know what I mean? Like a good actor can just access um, stuff. And um, these young people, and because where Ireland is, like I'm not going to say trauma, but I'm going to say we live life pretty yeah. fast as young people. Mm, and so we can access things from grief and from trauma That's from powerful. a very yeah. early age. And I'm not saying like as an actor you have to go, oh, it's a sad scene. When was I beaten up as a kid that I can use? But you can, you think about grief, you know what I mean? Like, we, I can remember going to funerals for like people like every third week when I was a kid. Like, mm, yeah. we're so used to grief as peop- Pacific people. Yeah. From uh, So it's just about accessing mm. those sorts of things. We, yeah. We're fortunate, it's hard, you know, as an island kid growing up because we, we get the shit stick all the time. Yeah. But it's, uh, as an adult, if you, whether you choose to use it or not, mm. it can actually inform you to become such an amazing person, mm. all of those experiences, and an amazing actor. I just love what you were just saying, like th- what what you were saying with just then, like um, I think it also has the power to kind of change people's look on what a brown man looks like or or feels like or yeah. even sorry feels like what the <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, I'm not supposed to say that <laughs> <laughs> um, what a brown man like actually is like exactly you know like emotionally physically and also. Um, just it gives an insight like this. I think I think will be a great way where we can get an insight of of what the usos actually feel like behind mm-hmm. the doors. Yeah, you know, and um, this is an insight into actually I think what happens behind closed doors and the emotions that all our, all our usos feel mm-hmm. in general. In general, mm-hmm. uh, in general, sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's 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 yeah. That's it's it's saying thing, that. It's exactly what you're saying. Like we are allowed to as men have feelings yeah. we're allowed to be vulnerable and we're allowed to cry we're allowed to feel like shit and we're like we yeah. have every right to do that all this toxic masculinity shit that we've existed That's in the word. for yeah. a long long yeah. time has af- yeah. affected our men um and you know the the repercussions of that is that we're violent and we're we think that that's cool. Like we think that's okay to treat mm. a woman like that. Yeah. And we think it's okay to belittle the LGBT community because of feminine, mm. yeah. femininity. And it's mm. not like we have to get rid of that perception that being a man means being an yeah. asshole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's not. And I, I hope this I'm show, saying. you know, like it strips down something so hyper masculine like sport. Yeah. And goes actually like, there are vulnerable parts of it. We just yeah. don't see it. Yeah. You know? I've got, a, uh, I've got a question for both of you guys. Yeah. Um, so um, you were talking about um, the like actors saying like it was hard for them to, to call themselves actors. Um, <laughs> but when, um, like, what um, f- for, this is for people that are, you know, thinking, considering it, you know, considering the acting or getting into the industry or, you know, um, you know, giving it a try for, like these are for those people out there right now. And I just wanted to ask, like, um, in in terms of your guys' experiences and stuff, uh, what what are some key aspects or attitudes do you think uh, they would need to require into this into this industry? Uh, I uh, the number one thing is yeah. just the desire to do so. Yeah. Mm. If you have a desire to do it, mm-hmm. um, that that's the first thing. The second thing is find your tribe wherever you are. Yeah. Find your tribe. Like, um, I think what we're doing, if you're in, and thirdly, if you're in Western Sydney, yeah, just come to my tribe. <laughs> <laughs> like, my sets are open. Like, I have no, res- like, yeah. in, in the industry, like, you, 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 there's a restriction on who can and can't come. Mm. In, in, I don't work like that. Like, yeah. They're open. Come to say, mm. send me a message. Mm. Yeah. Say when you're going to pop in and pop in. But, like, just having the desire to do so the is desire, actually, yeah. actually says a lot. And wow. that's generally enough. Yeah, I, I think what I've found is you always find the people that you need mm. to help you. Yeah, in some way, hundred percent. Um, they sort of our ancestors don't play. You know, yeah. they give you what you need when you need it. Mm. And um, I think just tr- sort of trust in that. Yeah, do the work, watch some films. Yeah. Um, yeah, work, read some books and stuff. Mm, hundred. Or you know, even if you have access to none of that stuff, 
do something creative yeah. because mm. everything will inform. There was two years I didn't do anything yeah. when I got back to Sydney. Oh, really? I was so depressed. I didn't think I, I was going to give it up. Yeah. I was done. Jeez. Like I was, I was so jaded by the industry. Yeah, I was it's, like, real, it's a real place, man. Yeah, yeah the huh. industry's fucked. Like, yeah. it, it's fucked me over. I've lost who I am and I don't want to do it anymore. Mm. And so I went and worked full time. I was in a factory, hated that. Did street charity, hated yeah. that. And then I did, I was a flight attendant. Uh, and I stole him, <laughs> technically oh, stole that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and I realized I can't do any of that. Like, yeah. But the thing is, I don't regret the two years I didn't do it because mm. it informed everything I am now. Yeah, and I, I spent two years gaining, gathering story. And I think uh, that's worth it. So don't, don't like judge the outside of, say if you want to be an actor and you're working in a factory, for example. Yeah. That's still useful. That's still you. useful, yeah. That's a useful of place course. to be. Yeah. And uh, because you are learning, you're hearing, and you're gathering a story. Yeah. And that, oh. that can only inform you. Oh, love that. Yeah. Brendan? Uh, for me, I guess it's just taking that first step mm. and yeah. like not worrying about what anyone else thinks mm. or like what they're going to say. Because I know for me, uh, <laughs> when I got tagged on the audition post, um, like the things that were going through my head was like, uh, what would my family say yeah, about what me? I like, think, yeah. Like, what would the boys say mm. if they if they knew, like, I was doing this stuff? Yeah. And like, um, I guess it got to a point where I just didn't care anymore. Yeah. Like, I, I I needed to do something, nice. and so I, I took that first step. And I I think for for others out there who are looking to get into it, it's just taking that first step. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just uh, you know, follow any any creative out there that's um that's about. Our movement here, yeah. Uh, like you here at uh, Belasaso Picks, and just follow them. You know, get Come inspired on. and take that first step. You know, yeah. show, show love, support, and like, you know, soon enough you'll find yourself involved mm. uh, in the industry. Like, yeah, you know, soon enough. Soon yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely know that you live that. What like li you literally live what you just said. Because eh? yeah, right, this guy has been. Like if the, if you don't know, Brennan's been supporting us yeah. since <laughs> Take One. <laughs> <laughs> He's been a huge fan of ours think, um, since yeah. Take One. Not a fan, but a fan. I think um, <laughs> on your, uh, on your yeah. very first episode, yeah, because um, I, I loved your hot tell of that episode. Yeah, and like, I think because I, I haven't watched all your episodes. I think yeah. there's one or two I haven't watched, but it's your first episode. I've yeah. watched it like four or five times. Nah, more than more than four <laughs> or five times. And so cool. I. I I remember commenting on your first ever ev episode on YouTube, yeah. yeah. And I tagged Fields. Uh, I put his uh, Instagram handles, uh, his, his Instagram socials, uh, yeah. into your uh, comments. Yeah, I, yeah, remember, yeah, I yeah. remember that. And like, I, I still remember that. Like, <laughs> I, I love your episode one. And yeah, yeah right. You were actually the one who um, introduced us to Belisasa Picks mm. and um, and helped us check True. it out. Check it out. Yeah, because I, I, I had no idea. Um, about Pelisasa Picks or mm. anything that was happening. Mm. Yeah. And I just started seeing, like, after we started following you, we just started seeing more Parramatta, Parramatta yeah. and deity stuff. And I was like, man, this has got to be yeah. something going <laughs> on. And that's the value in sharing. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's such exactly. a simple app, literally two exactly. buttons. Yeah. Two presses you've shared and you could potentially open a door for someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's powerful, powerful yeah. yeah. Even now, like, someone's probably tuning in right now and, you know, yeah. really wanting to step into something that you guys are on or a project yeah. or whatever. Totally. So, but yeah, huge shout out to you guys for, for doing that, eh? Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Um, but you got, uh, when is Parramatta coming out? So we drop Para online, yep. sort of first thing in the morning on uh, 14th of December, yeah. which is a Monday. Monday, okay. okay. Mm. And when, where, where can people watch that? So you can watch it uh, uh, on the Palestra Olympics uh, YouTube, YouTube or on the Palestra Olympics Facebook watch. Okay. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. Facebook watch. Yeah. Still trying to figure out the nuts and bolts of that. The producer was like, <laughs> Facebook watch. And I was like, sure. I don't know what that is. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And oh. you also got another project you're working on mm. too, eh? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I was that dude that tried to do two. <laughs> I actually originally tried to do three. Yeah, I was confused. I was like, is this one yeah, or two? Like, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I saw two titles. I was like, ah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's definitely two. I tried to do three and the other pro the, pro the executive producer was like, <laughs> you no, 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 no. <laughs> and so I had to get rid of one after a like, big, um, big, like, I had to... <laughs> After a big moment of me like fighting for it, yeah. and then I had to have like a mediation <laughs> <laughs> to let go of the third one. But I, I'll, I'll bring that back to life. Yeah. But the other Come one's on, called yeah. Oh, so yeah. yeah, the other one's called Deity. Um, yeah, Deity. I, I think is is uh, and Brendan could probably speak to it too. But it's um, 
a complete flip, I guess, from para. Yep. On the surface, I think. I think at the core, it's the yep. same. The pep, the, the goal is the same, uh, to uplift our young people. Yep. Um, but I think the method is different. Yeah. And it's the, the theme and the genre is absolutely different. It's set in Mount Jua. I wanted to pay love to, to the, the, the place my family uh, resettled. Yeah. Good old Mountie. Um, yeah, Good resettled county. and um, gave us a new life yeah, you know, nice. that we couldn't have in New Zealand because we were broke. Yeah. <laughs> but Mount Jua gave us life. You know, for some people, it's, they people, people shit on it. Yeah. It's yeah. the scapegoat of, of, of Sydney. And, but for my family, it, it gave us a new life. So, it did, it yeah. And I will always pay tribute to Mount Jua as the mm. genesis of where my family began in this country. Wow. Nice. Um, and so this show was about um, offering to Mount Jua um, love and, and inspiring young people wow. from Mount Jua, but as the example for everyone who was yeah, listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that, man. And and that's going to be coming out more in the in the new year. In the year, new year, right? yeah. So we, we dropped that on, on the 4th of <coughs> January, 2021. Nice. Um, but yeah, check that out. They're, they're, they're two very different projects. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, Brendan's uh, one of the main characters in there as well. Wow. So, it, I mean, I'd be interested to know sort of what the experience was and oh, the difference nice. between the storytelling. Yeah. Um, like between the characters yeah. that I play? Oh, so the character that I play in Deities, it's like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> a, <laughs> it's a complete flip on uh, the character that, that I play in Parramatta, which oh, is really? Atul Neil, yeah. So like, um, the character that I play in Deity is... He's more of a bully. Yeah, he's, he's that kind of villain character in the, in okay. the, in the series. Oh, the eye guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's that. One. And um, like, you think about movies like um, what's the movie like? Shark. Oh, like Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Like oh, those, yeah. those bullies. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. that kind of guy. Oh, and, like, okay. Yeah, and so like, I, I had to really step out of my comfort zone, mm. and like, it, it was it was good. You know, it was good yeah, to to try something new, try mm, something yeah. different, um, and step out of my comfort zone. You know, um, I, I sort of got a chance to to joke around in a way that I would joke around with the boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like um, my character has no filter. He's like yeah. he's straight oh, savage. Yeah, so savage yeah. mostly. That would have been so awesome. yeah, <laughs> you would have loved that. Loved that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, everyone loves playing villains. Like I would love villains. <laughs> Yeah, so like the the lines that I had, they were, they were very aggressive. Yeah, oh and wow. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was it was pretty pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah I, I love that. It. it was something new. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you guys um shoot both films? Have you ever sh- shot both films in one day? We we sh- so the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah double wow. time. We, 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 that? Like, we, we shot both. At, so yeah. we shot Para and Dirty in the same shoot schedule. So we. Say for example, we based it on locations. Yeah. Okay. And so, say for example, if, if Para and Daly had a say, there was a house in Daly and a house in Para. Yeah. We booked the house. Yeah. And we split the house in half. And so, one half of the house was Para, one half of the house was Daly. Yeah. So we were shooting constantly between the two, all wow. the time. So for the actors, uh, I could sort of feel sorry for them, but I sort of don't because we had done. <laughs> 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 the actors who were in both, they had to yeah. keep switching between characters. Yeah. And oh, different bro. stories. Yeah. But uh, it was like, you know... We, How we, many of the actors are doing both? Uh, there's quite a few. Maybe uh, Brendan. Uh, Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> Keenan. Uh, maybe four? James. Four, oh, there's a fair There's a fair bit. Laven. Oh, there's maybe six or seven. True. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's yeah. called yeah. cutting costs. <laughs> 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 no, but also like... You know, in, uh, in the theatre world, there's a term called like a reper- repertory theatre. Yeah. Okay. Where they travel shows, like three shows at the same time, and they yeah. use the same actors. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And so the actors get a, a, a chance to work the muscle in different ways. Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, but also, you know, when the story, when these go out into the world and they grow, mm. the stories will take different paths, but mm. it means that these actors have more than one job. Yeah. Mm. True. You know, if they both get picked up and travel, True. they're in two different projects. So it's like, you know, more chance. Two jobs. <laughs> two, oh, jobs. <laughs> two jobs two jobs jeez ah. alright so I'll finish off with this question for Brendan um, do you actually you want to talk more about the AD or <laughs> I think huh? that's it yeah. um, so Brendan what's the, what's the dream bro oh, what's the dream yeah like what's the dream for now like for now what, what do you have in in mind what do you have in um, now that you're working with with um, Felicasa picks 
honestly, like, um, yeah, a lot of people are going to laugh at this, yeah. but I'm actually going to say it right now. Like, I'm going to make this. Gonna do it. <laughs> I'll go. Speak through it, like, bro. We're going to re record yeah, yeah. this and post it to <laughs> every time. <laughs> like, it's, it's a long shot, but, you know, with, with the support and love that uh, we're building in our, our family mm. here in Western Sydney, you know, I, I don't reckon there's, you know, there's, there's a limit to what we can do. Yeah. And I, I guess uh, a lot of people... Like family and friends have been teasing me mm. uh, about this show called uh, Home and Away. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, and Ooh. so yeah, like I, I've I've been thinking about it like for a couple of weeks now, and like yeah, yeah. you know, what if I can get onto Home and Away, home and away or yeah. if not Home and Away, because I know like they're finishing up or like oh, they finished up. I don't, oh, I don't know. Yeah, what? like yeah. <gasps> My, my mom watches it all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my mom watches that it all the time. Right. Yeah. So, like, yeah, if not Home and Away, then another like massive, yeah, yeah like a yeah. Big uh, massive Australian TV show, yeah, TV like show, yeah, yeah. in Australian TV. Like, uh, yeah, so so that's the dream man. right now. Yeah, that's awesome. Bro. It's crazy. That's the first time I heard it. I love that. I love it, bro. That's me. Yeah, I love that. Like, this has kind of opened your mind to a whole like mm. bigger world. Yeah. You know. And it's this little. Who ever thought that you would be dreaming that dream from a post? Mm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. From being tagged in a post. <laughs> like it's it's crazy. I can't believe it. Like yeah. I've like honestly like until like it wasn't until I got um, I started working with Phil. Yeah. Like that I I realized like you know bro I I've never been more proud to be yeah Samoan or yeah. like just true a Polynesian. Like, I've never yeah. been more yeah. proud. Like I I think. Oh, how do I say it? Like, I, I never would have thought that, you know, making Home and Away or, like, becoming an actor would be possible mm. until mm. I, I was given, like, the pathway. Yeah. Like, mm. by yeah. So, like, it's crazy. Like, yeah. ho hopefully, like, many out there, uh, or many others out there yeah. Yeah. find the same path. Well, I, I just want to say, like, on, on behalf of the Also Table Talk, bro, we want to encourage you. Like, this is a season right now where you're going through. It sounds like you're in a season where you've got, the tools being given to you. Yeah, you've got mentors and, and a family around you who love you, who dream this, who dream alongside you, and I think that's a, a beautiful thing to have. A, eh? um, and we want to encourage you, bro. Keep going, keep, keep going, keep going man. man. Don't stop, man. We're gonna we're gonna send you this, this, <laughs> this recording, okay? Yeah. And we're gonna remind you, home and away, home <laughs> and away. <laughs> so um, like the music industry is booming right now yeah yeah and man i feel like you guys are actually going to be the ones that's gonna you know yeah. uplift the filming industry as well at the same level yeah. and I, I'm, yeah. I'm declaring it now bro this is gonna <laughs> we'll it's, take that. It's, we'll it's gonna it's gonna yeah. happen bro straight and, up uh, it's, it's you have our blessings <laughs> <laughs> straight up the things that are coming out of western sydney yeah. right now honestly Ooh, crazy. it's, it's I, insane i like, think i said it to you before like was it the you that i used the term bollywood yeah, Hollywood, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hollywood. I think you said that to me yeah. once as well. Uh, yeah. Honestly, it's the goal. Like for me, I want people when they think of Pacific Australian <laughs> film, mm. I want them to think of Western Sydney. Yeah, yeah. That is the goal. 100%. That is the goal. Mm. I want them to be like, "Oh man, uh, have you been to Bollywood?" And yeah. Everyone knows they're talking about Western Sydney. Western Sydney. Yeah. That's like, what's and that's what I want to happen. I want this to be like a port of call for Speak Pacific story mm. and Pacific actors and Pacific filmmakers oh. in the same way that the music industry has carried us in the yeah. world as Pacific people in Western Sydney. Yeah. Um, we need to like help carry. Yeah. Come load, on. Help carry the load. Yeah. Mm. In the ways that we can. I mean, the f music is booming. Yeah. yeah. And like, I'm so grateful for that. Mm. Um, but we need to play our part too. Yeah. Come yeah. on. So. Oh, bro. Yeah. That's Hollywood. Let's go. <laughs> you heard it here first. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> Get used to it. Trade market more, more. Trade market. Oh, <laughs> man. All right. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, was our hot teller. Honestly, yeah. we want to um, thank you so much, guys, for opening up and being vulnerable with us um, and also letting us inside of what you guys are working on in, in, the, in your world. You know? You're know. you welcome. And um, honestly, uh, be, make sure to check down below for the, all the details and stuff. And yeah. we'll definitely... Um, Show some some media work on our on our on our Instagram. Yeah. Yo. Um, but right now we're gonna get into the beast support. Let's go. The Uso Table Talk Podcast. I think it's Pusho Boss fam. It's Pusho oh Boss. Oh my fam. days, brother. What's that? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what Bisupo is, Bisupo is basically a segment where we kind of speak life and encouragement. So, but right now, since we've got the special guest, uh, we have special guests. 
I want to give it over to the Uso uh, Fia, who's going to encourage you guys with uh, the Pisupo for today. Cool. Let's go. Ooh, the pressure. Um, <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, where do I start? You know, it's hard to, when I think about like providing words of inspiration for Pacifica people, yeah. especially like specifically to young people who, yeah. I, who I talk to and who's, uh, who my work is specifically targeted at uplifting, it's hard to not talk about where we come from mm -hmm. and actually who we were. And I think um, if, 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 there are, if, if there is an obstacle in, that is in the way of something that you want, um, I think uh, the world has taught us as specific people that we are not good enough for things mm. and that we do not deserve things mm. but for me it's as simple as thinking about the greatness of where we came from to start with yeah we're not taught in schools that our ancestors were the greatest navigators in the entire world yeah mm. through our history they navigated the biggest ocean in the world for centuries trading marrying um sharing culture sharing language and um, wow, yeah. and they reduced and colonialism reduced us to a very small pond and told us that that's where we belong. Yeah. And so we never really. And this sounds very Moana like. Yeah. But it is Moana at the core of Moana is the it's, same message. Yeah, definitely. Uh, wake up in the morning and be grateful that you you have the lineage of the greatest navigators in the world <laughs> yeah. running through you, and that should be enough to like get you through an obstacle that we deem to be huge. Yeah. But think about what they would have been encountering on yeah. their travels. Great. Storms and, and like waves and all that stuff. Mm. And yet we, uh, in 2020, we're still here. Yeah. So they did it. Like, and it's uh, up to us um, to, to, to work as hard and to carry on our people's uh, legacy uh, to, in the ways that we can um, to the same degree that they did for us. Um, so, Nothing is an obstacle. Yeah. Nah. And if anything, you, you, um, as a Pacifica person, if you think it's an obstacle to be one, it's actually your power. Like, yeah. that's a that's a blessing. Mm, yeah. And for me, being Pacifica has always been a blessing. So I want every young person to walk through life knowing that that's a blessing that you, only you've been given. Yes. Yeah. Um, and to use it uh, and to carry us with you. Um, yeah, that's my inspiration. Come on. What's up? What's up? What's up? Wow, that was, so that was the, hey, the piece of pie. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's more than enough piece of pie. <laughs> yeah. It's never enough, bro. Never enough. <laughs> uh, uh, but honestly, we thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for oh, um, being with yeah. us on this podcast. Thank you. Uh, Thanks we so honestly much. cannot wait to check out the premiere next week. So. Yes. Oh, man. Uh, make sure you check out these guys. I'll yep. put their tags down below. Uh, yeah. Also, make sure you're following Pelisasa Picks and mm -hmm. all the stuff that they got going on there. Um, Paramatter mm -hmm. series and Deity coming out soon. Um, but yeah, mm. thank you guys. Thanks for so having and, uh, and also, thank you to you guys for the work that you guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, visibility is in one, one, one note. It has to happen on all spectrums yeah. of media. So. I think, yeah, you uh, never underestimate what you guys do because it's huge oh, for us. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man. Oh, man. Awesome. <laughs> um, all right, I'll, I'll close us off with a prayer. Yeah. Or oh, you want to go? You want to I'll, pray do pray. I'll do it. Right. Yeah. All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this um, this awesome day you've given us, this uh, this opportunity just to just to be speaking life to each other, Father, and just um, um, also just being, um, being in your presence, Lord, and... Um, yeah, we thank you for the week that you've given us. I pray that um, as we go, we just keep uh, encouraging and keep uh, loving our people. And um, yeah, we do we do that in your name. We pray. Amen. 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 All right. So um, right now, I'm gonna actually let you let you guys go, and we're gonna um, leave you with a trailer. But before that, uh, we want to say a huge shout out to uh, Bella Vista Hotel for letting us use this space. Hey, hey, hey. Also, shout out to everyone in this room. Thank you so much for coming. Um, and also shout out to my fiance Moana, I love you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what have you done wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Any shout outs? Oh, nah, nah, nah. Oh, okay, nah, shout outs. Nah, nah. Do some shout outs. Shout her out, bro. Shout her out. Oh, nah, 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 nah. Nah. Uh, shout out to all the fam. Yeah, uh, showing love and support both here and overseas. Oh. Uh, serious drops in. Oh. Hey. Yeah, uh, shout out to um, to my mom yes. <laughs> and my dad. I love you. Love you, man. All right. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, oh, peace, guys. Make sure you check yeah. out this trailer. We're gonna we're gonna play for you. Another year, another season. Oh, this is a footy team riffraff. Eli, Isaiah, Skamalo, Otoa. And... Oh, I'm Otoneo. And yeah, we have a lot riding on you this season, eh? Your parents, they have a lot riding on you too, so... Welcome to Western Sydney. Welcome to the promised land. <laughs> Good times, real good times. Senorita, we some know it's not Pacific Wonderland. Wait, look after this one. We don't want to lose another one. We're Sydney in the house, boy. Bad times, some real bad times. Straight still in the show, let it be known, baby. Me and my brother Kate. Cafe Fe or Pukio. He belong to you? You do too much for these boys. Well, if we don't look out for them, who will they? What I learned about footy is that people forget that our brown bodies ain't just numbers. They forget that we're island boys, and we're gonna fuck it up. Really fuck it up. No dancing moves. When the brown boy up, we up and do it for the family. We up and do it so we all can eat. I put that on everything. Mama waiting on some finer things. I'm Islander, you know we put them strings. I put that on everything. I want the bag, live in luxury. So tell my family, don't give up on me. Keep on waiting, you gon' see. The figures do it so we all can eat. I dream like 23. So